Good day, math learners! Today, we will be discussing unfactoring polynomials. When we were in grade 8, factoring methods were thought. They are common monomial factor, sum and difference of two cubes, factoring of perfect square trinomial, factoring of quadratic trinomial, factoring by grouping, difference of two squares and for this week's video we introduce you the factor theorem please watch that one first before you proceed in this video because these methods are the things that we are going to use in factoring polynomials but this time we will be focusing on the factor theorems since this is new for us and the most appropriate method in factoring third, fourth, fifth degrees of polynomials, and so on. So let us consider the following polynomials and find out whether the given binomial is a factor or not. In the given polynomial function, x squared minus 5x minus 36, do you consider that x plus 4 is a binomial factor? Yes, this is a binomial factor. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c. And then, consider the given binomial, which is x plus 4, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. x plus 4 can be written in the form of x minus negative 4 in order for us to identify the c in the form of x minus c. So, c is equal to negative 4. So, next, we are going to make our polynomial expression into polynomial function which is p of x is equal to x squared minus 5x minus 36. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of negative 4. Then, substitute the value of x which is negative 4 squared minus 5 minus 4 minus 36. And when we are going to simplify them further, the answer would become 0. Since p of negative 4 is equal to 0, x plus 4 is a factor of the given polynomial. In the given polynomial x squared plus 6x minus 55, do you consider that x plus 5 is a binomial factor? No, this is not a binomial factor. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c, and then consider the given binomial, which is x plus 5, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. x plus 5 can be written in the form of x minus negative 5 in order to identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to negative 5. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 55. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of negative 5. Then, substitute x which, which is negative 5, then copy squared plus 6 ne times negative 5 minus 55. And then, simplify them further and you will be getting negative 60. Since p of negative 5 is equal to negative 60, x plus 5 is not a factor of the given polynomial. Therefore, 
the polynomial is not divisible by x plus 5 or is not considered as a binomial factor. In the given polynomial, x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x minus 10, do you consider that x minus 2 is a binomial factor? Okay, yes, x minus 2 is a binomial factor. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c, and then consider the given binomial, which is x minus 2, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. In order for us to identify the c in the form of x minus c. So, c is equal to 2. So, make our polynomial expression into polynomial function which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x minus 10. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem process that for every p of x is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of 2 and then substitute a variable x which is 2 then 2 raised to 3 minus 4 times 2 raised to 2 plus 9 times 2 minus 10. Simplify them further and you will be getting 0. Since P of 2 is equal to 0, X minus 2 is a factor of the given polynomial. Therefore, P of X is divisible by X minus 2 or is considered as a binomial factor. Previous activity allows us to identify whether a binomial completely divides a polynomial or not. This can be done by using either the synthetic division or the remainder theorem, in which our goal is to obtain a remainder of zero. We say that whenever this happens, then the binomial divisor is a factor of the polynomial. The given table shows the given polynomials and their factors. For the first polynomial, which is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 10x minus 24, its factored form is x plus 2, x minus 3, and x plus 4. For the second polynomial, which is x cubed plus 4x squared minus 11x minus 30, its factored form is x plus 5, x minus 3, x plus 2. For the third polynomial, which is x raised to 4 plus 4x cubed minus x squared minus 16x minus 12, its factored form is x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 3, and x plus 1. For the fourth polynomial, which is 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x plus 3, its factored form is 2x minus 1, x minus 1, x plus 3. The given polynomials have this degree of polynomial. So we have 3, 3, 4, and 3. As what you have observed, that the basis of the number of factors of the given polynomials are the degrees of the polynomials. In the first polynomial, its degree is 3. Therefore, we have 3 factors. For the second polynomial, its degree is 3 also. Then we have 3 factors. In the third polynomial, its degree is 4, so we have 4 factors. And in the fourth polynomial, its degree is 3, so we have 3 factors. In the next column, we need to know as well the leading coefficient of the polynomials. So the leading coefficient of the first polynomial is 1. We have 1, we have 1, and 2. This leading coefficient will give us hint that the x terms or the first terms in the factored form is equal to the product of their coefficient. For example, in the first polynomial, if we are going to multiply if we are going to multiply x x x the 
first term of the factored form, each product is the leading coefficient of the polynomial. So, the answer is x cubed. As well as in uh, polynomial number 4, if we are going to multiply the first term of the factors, we have 2x, x, and x. The product is considered as 2x cubed, which is the leading coefficient of the polynomial. Also, the constant term is needed to consider. So, in our first polynomial, we have negative 24, negative 30, negative 12, and 3. If we are going to uh, multiply the second term of each factors or the constant terms in each factors in number 1, 2 times negative 3, that is negative 6, times 4, that makes it negative 24 as our constant term in our polynomial. If we are going to multiply 5 times negative 3 times 2, the answer is negative 30. If we are going to multiply negative 2, 2, 3, and 1, the answer would be negative 12. If we are going to multiply negative 1, negative 1, and 3, the answer is 3. So these observations of the idea of the factor theorem will be used in factoring polynomials. So let's have a practice. Factor the polynomials completely using the factor theorem. For example, number 1, x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. The possible number of factors is 3 because the degree of the polynomial is 3. Since the constant term is negative 2, we will consider its factor, which are negative 2 and 1, or negative 1 and 2. Therefore, its possible binomial factors are x minus 2, x minus 1, x plus 1, and x plus 2. Among the four factors, there must be three factors of the given polynomial. See to it that if we are going to multiply the first terms of the three factors, each product is the first term of the given polynomial. And if we are going to multiply the constant term of the factors, each product is equal to negative 2. So in order for us not to guess which would be the binomial factors, let's use the factor theorem by testing first the x minus 2. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial, which is x minus 2, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. Then, identify the c in the form of x minus c. So, c is equal to 2. So, make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And there is an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of 2. Substitute the variable x, which is 2, and our expression becomes 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 squared minus 2 minus 2. And simplify them further, and the answer will become 12. Since p of 2 is not equal to 0, therefore x minus 2 is not a factor. So let's test x minus 1. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c, and then consider the given binomial, which is x minus 1, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. Then, identify the c in the form of x minus c, and c is equal to 1. 
function. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of 1. Then substitute the variable x. So, it will become 1 cubed plus 2 times 1 squared minus 1 minus 2. And then, the answer is equal to 0. Since p of 1 is not equal to 0, then x minus 1 is a factor. So now, let's test x plus 1. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial, which is x plus 1. And to be proven, if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial, x plus 1 can be written in the form of x minus negative 1. Then identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to negative 1. So, make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of negative 1. And then, this must be our form of our equation. So we have negative 1 cubed plus 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 minus 2 because we will substitute the variable x there. And p of negative 1 is equal to 0. Since p of negative 1 is equal to 0, then x plus 1 is a factor. So now let's test x plus 2. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial, which is x plus 2. To be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial, x plus 2 can be written in the form of x minus negative 2. Then identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to negative 2. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2. And for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of negative 1. And this must be our um, equation. So p of negative 2 is equal to negative 2 raised to 3 plus 2 times negative 2 raised to 2 minus negative 2 minus 2 in which we are going to substitute the variable x there and then simplify them further and p of negative 2 is equal to 0 since p of negative 2 is equal to 0 then x plus 2 is a factor since we have the three checks already for the possible binomial factors because there must be three binomial factors of the given polynomials. So we conclude that the factors of the polynomial x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2 are x minus 1, x plus 1, and x plus 2. For example, number 2 x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. So we are going to find the factors of this. The possible number of factors is 3 because the degree of the polynomial is 3. Since the constant term is 6, we will consider its factor, which are 6 and 1, negative 6 and negative 1, 3 and 2, negative 3 and negative 2. Therefore, its possible binomial factors are x minus 6, x plus 6, x minus 3, x plus 3, x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 2, x plus 2. See to it that if you're going to multiply the first terms of the three factors, its product is the first term of the given polynomial. And if you are going to multiply the constant terms of the factors, its product is equal to 6. So in order for us not to guess which would be the binomial factors, let's use the factor theorem by testing first the x minus 6. 
here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor x minus c and then consider the given binomial which is x minus 6 to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. Then identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to 6. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. There's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of c. And our equation becomes p of 6 is equal to 6 raised to 3 minus 4 times 6 raised to 2 plus 6 plus 6 in which we substitute the variable x with 6 and then simplify them further and p of 6 is equal to 84. Since p of 6 is not equal to 0, x minus 6 is not a factor. So now, let's test x plus 6. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor which is x minus c and then consider the given binomial which is x plus 6 to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. x plus 6 can be written in the form of x minus negative 6. In order for us to identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to negative 6. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function which is x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x with p of negative 6. And this must be our equation. p of negative 6 equals negative 6 raised to 3 minus 4 minus 6 raised to 2 plus negative 6 plus 6 in which x is being substituted with negative 6. And simplify them further, p of negative 6 is equal to negative 360. Since p of negative 6 is not equal to 0, then x plus 6 is not a factor. So now, let's test x minus 3. Here is the solution. So, we will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus 6. And then consider the given binomial, which is x minus 3, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. Then identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to 3. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of 3. So our equation becomes p of 3 is equal to 3 raised to 3 minus 4 times 3 squared plus 3 plus 6. And p of 3 is equal to 0. Since p of 3 is equal to 0, then x minus 3 is a factor. So now let's test x plus 3. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial which is x plus 3 to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. And x plus 3 can be written in, in the form of x minus negative 3. Then identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to negative 3. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And uh, please do not forget that for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to 
P of negative 3. So, our equation becomes P of negative 3 is equal to negative 3 cubed minus 4 times negative 3 squared plus negative 3 plus 6. And we are going to simplify them further. And the answer is P of negative 3 is equal to negative 6 P. Since P of negative 3 is not equal to 0, therefore X plus 3 is not a factor. So now, let's test x plus 1. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial, which is x plus 1, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. And x plus 1 can be written in the form of x minus negative 1 in order for us to identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to negative 1. And make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And substitute um, the variable x to negative 1 because p of x is equal to p of c. So, our equation becomes p of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 cubed minus 4 times negative 1 squared plus negative 1 plus 6. And p of negative 1 is equal to 0. Since p of negative 1 is equal to 0, x plus 1 is a factor. So now, let's test x minus 1. Solutions. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial, which is x minus 1. To be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial, then identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to 1. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, our equation becomes p of 1 is equal to 1 raised to 3 minus 4 times 1 squared plus 1 plus 6, in which the variable x is substituted with the value 1. So, simplify them further, and p of 1 is equal to 4. Since p of 1 is not equal to 0, therefore, x minus 1 is not a factor. So, now let's test x minus 2. Here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c, and then consider the given binomial, which is x minus 2 to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. Then identify the c in the form of x minus c. So c is equal to 2. So next, make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is x cubed, or p of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of 2. And our equation becomes p of 2 is equal to 2 cubed minus 4 times 2 squared plus 2 plus 6, in which x is substituted with a value 2. And simplify them further, and p of 2 is equal to 0. Since p of 2 is equal to 0, then x minus 2 is a factor. Since we have three checks already for the possible binomial factors, because there must be three binomial factors of the given polynomials, we conclude that the factors x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 are x minus 3, x plus 1, and x minus 2. There's another way of factoring polynomials, and we have to consider this procedure. First step, use the concept of factor theorem. Second step, use the synthetic division. And for the third step, use any of the factoring methods.
For example, number 3, find the factors of the given polynomial x cubed plus 8x squared plus 17x plus 10. Let's consider the step 1, which is to use the concept of factor theorem. There are three possible number of factors because of the degree of the polynomial is 3. Since the constant is 10, we will consider also its factors which are 10 and 1, 5 and 2, negative 10 and negative 1, negative 5 and negative 2. Therefore, its possible binomial factors are x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus 5, x plus 5, x minus 10, x plus 10. Among the 8 factors, there must be 3 factors of the given polynomial. See to it that if you are going to multiply the first terms of the 3 factors, each product is the first term of the given polynomial. And if you are going to multiply the constant term of the factors, its product is equal to 10. So in order for us not to guess which would be the binomial factors, let's use the factor theorem by testing first the x minus 1. So here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial which is x minus 1. To be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial, then to identify the c in the form of x minus c, so c is equal to 1. So make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed plus 8x squared plus 17x plus 10. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of c or p of 1. So our equation becomes p of 1 is equal to 1 cubed plus 8 times 1 squared plus 17 times 1 plus 10. And then simplify them further so we have p of 1 is equal to 1 plus 8 plus 17 plus 10 and p of 1 is equal to 36 since p of 1 is not equal to 0 therefore x minus 1 is not a factor so now let's test x plus 1 here is the solution we will consider the form of our divisor which is x minus c and then consider the given binomial which is x plus 1 to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial then x plus 1 can be written in the form of x minus negative 1 in order for us to identify the c in the form of x minus c so c is equal to negative 1 so make our polynomial expression into polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed plus 8x squared plus 17x plus 10. And for every p of x, it is equal to p of c. Therefore, we will substitute p of x to p of negative 1. And our equation becomes p of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 cubed plus 8 times negative 1 squared plus 17 times negative 1 plus 10 and p of negative 1 is equal to 0. Since p of negative 1 is equal to 0, then x plus 1 is a factor. Just remember class that we have to get at least one factor of the given polynomial using the factor theorem before we proceed to step which is to use the synthetic division. Consider the given polynomial which is x cubed plus 8x squared plus 17x plus 10 and get its numerical coefficient including its con constant. So we have 1, 8, 17, and 10. Since x plus 1 is a factor 
as we computed earlier. So we are going to get the value of C, which is equal to negative 1, and place it here as the multiplier on the process for synthetic division. Put a line to distinguish the second and the third rows of number in this process. So first, you're going to bring down 1 and then 1 times negative 1, the answer is negative 1. So 8 plus negative 1, the answer is 7. 7 times negative 1, the answer is negative 7. 17 plus negative 7, the answer is 10. 10 times negative 1, the answer is negative 10. And 10 plus negative 10, the answer is 0. So 0 is considered as a remainder. So get the result of the synthetic division and consider this as the numerical coefficients of the terms and constant for the last term. The degree of the new polynomial is 1 less than the degree of the given polynomial. So our new polynomial is x squared plus 7x plus 10 or we call this one as depressed polynomial. For step 3, use any of the factoring method that will fit to the new polynomial. Since our new polynomial is a quadratic trinomial, we will use the factoring of quadratic trinomial in which we consider first the constant which is 10. Get its possible factors which are 10 and 1 and 5 and 2 after which get the sum of the factors. For the 10 and 1, its sum is 11 and for 5 and 2, its sum is 7. Then check the middle term of our new polynomial. Since we have 7x as its middle term, the factors of 10 should be chosen are 5 and 2. So the factors are x plus 5 and x plus 2. Therefore, the factors of our given polynomial x cubed plus 8x squared plus 17x plus 10 are x plus 1, x plus 5, and x plus 2. For example, number 4, find the factors of the given polynomial function x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9. So let's consider the step 1, which is to use the concept of factor theorem. There are three possible number of factors because the degree of the polynomial is 3. Since the constant term is 9, we will consider its factors, which are 9 and 1, 3 and 3, negative 9 and negative 1, negative 3 and negative 3. Therefore, its possible binomial factors are x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 9, and x plus 9. See to it that if we are going to multiply the first term of the three factors, its product is the first term of the given polynomial. And if we are going to multiply the constant term of the factors, its product is equal to 9. So in order for us not to guess which would be the binomial factors, let's use the factor theorem by testing first the x minus 1. So here is the solution. We will consider the form of our divisor, which is x minus c. And then consider the given binomial, which is x minus 1, to be proven if this is a binomial factor of the given polynomial. Then identify the c in the form of x minus c, so c is equal to 1. So write down our given polynomial function, which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9. And there's an indication when we use the concept of remainder theorem that for every p of x is equal to p of c. Therefore, 
we will substitute p of x to p of c and c is equal to 1. So, our equation becomes p of 1 is equal to 1 cubed minus 1 squared minus 9 times 1 plus 9. Simplify them further and p of 1 is equal to 0. Since p of 1 is equal to 0, then x minus 1 is a factor. Just remember class that we have to get at least one factor of the given polynomial using the factor theorem before we proceed to step 2, which is to use the synthetic division. Consider the given polynomial which is p of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9 and get its numerical coefficient including its constant. So we have 1, negative 1, negative 9, and 9. Since x minus 1 is a factor as we computed earlier, get the value of c which is equal to 1 and place it here as the multiplier on the process for synthetic division. Put a line to distinguish the second and the third rows of numbers in this process. So first, bring down 1 and then 1 times 1, the answer is 1. And then negative 1 plus 1, the answer is 0. 0 times 1, the answer is 0. Negative 9 plus 0, the answer is negative 9. Negative 9 times 1, the answer is negative 9. And 9 plus negative 9, the answer is 0, which is considered as our remainder. So get the result of the synthetic division and consider this as the numerical coefficients of the terms and constants for the last term. The degree of the new polynomial is 1 less than the degree of the given polynomial. So our new polynomial is x squared plus 0x minus 9. Or, it can be simplified into this form, x squared minus 9. So this is our new polynomial or what we call the depressed polynomial. For step 3, which is to use any of the factoring methods, our new polynomial is x squared minus 9. We consider this as difference of two squares because the first term, which is x squared, is a square and 9 is also considered as a square. So, the difference of two squares is considered as x squared minus y squared. So, we are going to get the factor of this by getting the square root of the first term which is x squared. So the answer is x. And get the uh, square root of y squared which is y. And you have to put like this. And then put the minus sign of, you know, on the other factors and plus sign on the other factors. And just use the pattern. So we have x squared minus 9 get the square root of x squared, which is x, get the square root of 9, which is 3, and put minus sign, put plus sign also here. And the factors are x minus 3 and x plus 3. Therefore, the factors of the polynomial function x cubed minus x squared minus 9x plus 9 are x minus 1 and x minus 3 and x plus 3. Thank you for listening, math learners.